like to open an account, please? Oh, are you saving for something? Yep, my money's gonna save the world. We're gonna turn wind into energy! And even make it possible for the sun to power stuff. We're making farms more efficient. And turning gas into electric. No exhaust pipes, see? We're doing all that. We sure are. Hello, my name is Abwale. People down south call me Michael Kusuda. And we are Inuit. A long, long time ago, we ended up way up north in um, North America. And in one of the coldest places in the world, and we decided to stay. Uh, why? We could have moved to uh, British Columbia. We could have moved to Manitoba. We could have moved to Ontario, Quebec, or anywhere else. But we decided to stay. And um, in most of the places where we come from, there are no trees. So we have to invent something uh, to use for shelter. And to do that, we invented the most ingenious shelter in the world. Uh, we call it igloo. And it's all made out of snow. And uh, we had to heat our igloo, so we invented something we call a hudlik. This is a, a model that we uh, got from Paul Alpilabduk in Rankin Inlet. And this is just a small one. It's made out of soapstone, and the ones that we used were really big. So they were really, really heavy, and we only used them in the winter because in the summer, uh, we couldn't lug them around. They were too heavy. And <clears throat> we had to eat. And we discovered there are lots of animals, caribou. There are lots of caribou. Um, and most Inuit live on a coast. And in the bays and oceans, uh, there are seals, there are walruses, there are whales, there are polar bears, there are fish and all kinds of other animals. And in the, in the spring, birds arrive by the thousands uh, to build their nests, to raise their young. And in the fall, they fly away by the millions. And so we had all this food, and um, and after a while, uh, we got to live very comfortably because we had everything we needed. We had shelter, we had food, uh, we had oil from the seals for our kudliks. Uh, we had um, we even had toys, and then there got to be more and more and more of us, and today. Inuit are spread out all across the north. They're Inuit in Siberia. They're Inuit in Alaska. They're Inuit all across northern Canada, including northern Quebec and Labrador. And they're Inuit in Greenland. We all speak the same language with many different dialects. We um, eat the same basic foods. Uh, we dress basically the same. Uh, we... Um, have the same culture. And after a while, there got to be so many of us that we had to decide uh, on rules that we needed to have uh, to live in peace. So we're not fighting all the time. And we needed rules about how to take care of our young people to raise them to be respectable adults. We needed rules about how to take care of old people because the old people have been around for a long time and they have all this knowledge that 
we have to learn before they pass away. Uh, we needed rules about how to take care of the land and the sea because the land and the sea sustain all the animals that give us food, that give us clothing, that give us oil for our kudlets. So one day, a long, 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 long time ago, we made up all these rules. And then we have to teach them to other people. We have to teach them to our young people. Um, and to do that, we created stories. And when I was a little kid, uh, I loved to sleep at my grandmother's igloo. And every night, I would lie there um, beside my grandmother and I'd say, And she would say, Grandmother, please tell me a story. But I have no story to tell. And then, Grandmother, please tell me a story. But I have no story to tell. And after I asked her many, many times, she would say, Okay, settle down and I'll tell you a story. And my grandmother told me some of the most wonderful stories I have ever had. When I was a little kid, my most favorite story was the one that goes, It's a story about a little kid and her grandmother and they got left behind all by themselves in their igloo and then a little bird came, a little white bird, a snow bunting. It broke the window. It said, Palatatat, you could flew away. And that was the story. And I really loved that story. And I would ask my grandmother to tell it to me over and over and over until she got tired of it. And then I would have to ask her again, And she would say, but I have no story to tell. But of course, my grandmother always had lots and lots of stories to tell. Well, <clears throat> when I started to grow up, I discovered that we weren't the only ones with all those little stories. The Kabrinak, you know, the Caucasians or people from across the ocean, they have their own stories too, like those, and uh, they call them nursery rhymes. And we had lots of them. And then we have all these legends. The most famous person in our stories is a man called Kiviok. My grandmother said Kiviok was born a long, 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 long time ago, so long ago that he was the very first person on earth. And I used to say to my grandmother, Ananit yet. If Kiviok was the first person, how come he had a mother? And she would say, don't argue with old people. <laughs> but my grandmother was very kind and gentle and I wasn't very scared of her, so I would tease her grandmother, you know, he had a mother. How could he be the first person? Well, the old people say Kiviok is still alive, but he is so old, his body is turning to stone. And they say someday, when his heart turns completely to stone and stops, that will be the end of the universe. And there are many, many, many stories about this man. <clears throat> the very first story I've heard about Kibio was a story about this little boy. And this little boy loved to go out to play, but there were mean boys who lived in his camp. They would run after him, they would fight him, they would make him cry. They would rip up all his clothes and the poor boy would go home to his grandmother because he was an orphan. He had no mother and no father, so he lived with his grandmother. And his poor old grandmother would take her needle and thread and she would sew his clothes all back together again. And the little boy would put on his clothes, he would go off to play. The mean boys would run after him. They would fight him, they would make him cry, they would rip up all his clothes, and his poor old grandmother had to sew them all back together again. One day, when the little boy came home, there was a little seal that somebody had caught for them, and it was lying on the floor. His grandmother said, I would like you to skin that seal. So the little boy took a knife. He started to skin the seal. His grandmother said, 
be careful, be careful, don't put any holes in the skin. So very, very carefully, the little boy skinned the seal. And when he was all finished, his grandmother said, I would like you to take the seal skin and pull it over your head, and I would like you to put your head in that pail of water. There was a great big pail of water on the floor. So the little boy took the seal skin, he pulled it over his head so that it fit nicely, and he looked like a little seal. And then he took a deep breath, and he stuck his head into this pail of water. He kept his head underwater as long as he could, and when his lungs hurt, he lifted his head, and he went, And his grandmother said, do it again. So he took another deep breath, and he stuck his head back into this pail of water. He kept his head underwater as long as he could, going like this. You know what seals look like? They look like this. And he kept his head underwater as long as he could. And when his lungs were just about to break, he lifted his head and he went. And his grandmother said, do it again. So he took another deep breath and he stuck his head back into the spell of water. He kept his head underwater as long as he could go in. And when he was just about to drown, he lifted his head and he went. And his grandmother said, do it again. Every time he lifted his head, his grandmother would say, do it again. He would take a deep breath and he would stick his head back into this pail of water. And you know, after a while, he could keep his head underwater for a long, 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 long time. There was an old man way up north in a place called Kuratu. He told me that when he started putting his head underwater, he could keep it underwater, not for very long. But after a while, he could keep it underwater longer and longer and longer until he could move the sun. Have you ever tried to hold your breath until the sun moves? It takes a long time. And finally, his grandmother was satisfied that he could keep his head underwater long enough. And she said, I would like you to go down to the beach. And when you're walking to the beach, make sure nobody sees you. And when you get to the water's edge, I would like you to take the seal skin and pull it over your head and jump into the water and go for a swim and come up right in front of all your mean friends who were playing on the beach. And sure enough, all the mean boys were playing on the beach. You know, when I was a little kid, uh, we used to play down on the beach. Somebody would make a sack out of some kind of skin or cloth, and they would fill it with sand. And then they would sew it all up so it wouldn't leak. And then we'd play cat with this thing. We call it atawiyak. And that's what the mean, mean boys were doing. They were playing Akdoyak down on the beach. The little boy took the seal skin. He walked down to the beach. He made sure nobody saw him. And when he got to the water's edge, he took the seal skin. He pulled it over his head so that it fit nicely. And he looked like a little seal. And then he took a deep breath and he jumped into the water. He swam underwater and he came up right in front of all the mean boys who were playing on the beach. They looked at him and they said, hey, there's a little seal. They thought he was a little seal. And they all ran up, they grabbed their kayaks, you know, their long skinny skin boats. <clears throat> they put their kayaks in the water, they hopped and they took their long paddles and they started paddling following the little seal. The little seal would go down underwater and he would swim a little bit farther out and then he would come up again. And then he would go down and he would swim a little bit farther out and then he would come up again. And the mean boys who fought him and made him cry and ripped all his clothes, they were paddling their kayaks following along behind him. And it was a beautiful, beautiful day. And after a while, they were way out at sea. And when they were way out at sea, when the little seal came up, he would lift up his arm and his leg and he would sing, And then he'd go down again. He would swim a little bit farther out and when he came up, 
he would lift up his arm and his leg and he would sing, Ano wiga na? Ano wiga kaili? Unga, unga. And then he'd go down again. He would swim a little bit farther out and when he came up, he would lift up his arm and his leg and he would sing, Where's my wind? I want my wind. And he would make a crying sound like a little baby. Wah, wah. People say the weather that was on the day you were born is your very own weather. And that is why if you are born on a sunny day, you sleep with sunshine on your birthday. If you were born on a rainy day, you sleep rains on your birthday. And this little boy was born on a very, very windy day. And he was calling the weather that was on the day he was born. Where is my wind? I want my wind. And he made a crying sound like a little baby. Where? Where? The wind heard him and it started to come. It got windier and windier and windier. And before long, there were huge waves in the water. And the kayaks with all the main boys were going up and down, up and down in these huge waves. And every now and then, a giant wave would come and it would flip the kayaks over. And before long, there was only one person left. That person was Kivio. Now, Kivio was very good with his kayak. And he paddled his kayak on and on, going up and down, up and down in the big waves. And when a giant wave came and flipped his kayak over, he would roll it back up. He was really, really good with his kayak. And he kept on going. No matter how cold and wet and tired he got, he never gave up. He battled his kayak on in the big storm, and every time it flipped over, he would roll it back up. And finally, after a long time, the wind stopped, and the sea became really, really still again. And Kibiok was so tired, he put his paddle on his lap, he put his head on his chest, and he fell asleep. He slept for a long time, and when he woke up, he sat up in his kayak, he stretched, he looked around, he looked all around, but there was nothing but water. He was way out in the middle of the ocean. And because he was way out in the middle of the ocean, he couldn't see any land anywhere. And because he couldn't see land, he didn't know which way to go. And while he was sitting there, he started to think about some strange and wonderful things. One of the things he thought about was this little feather he had on the back of his coat. You see, ever since he was a tiny little boy, his mother, see, I told you he had a mother. I told my grandmother he had a mother. His mother always sewed a little feather on the back of his coat. It was a feather from a little bird called the sawak. And a sawak is a little brown bird that swims in tiny ponds. And while it's swimming, it goes around in circles, around and around and around and around. And while it's going around in circles, it goes like this. They're funny little birds and I love to watch them. And he had this little feather on the back of his coat. And he always wondered what it was for. And while he was sitting there, a little bird came, a little white bird, a snow bunting. You know, that, like that little bird that broke the window? It landed on his kayak. It looked at Kibiok and said, do you know which way to go? And Kibiok said, no, I don't know which way to go because there's nothing but water. And the little bird said, well, follow me. So we start to follow the little bird. And he paddled his kayak on and on. And after a long time, he saw this really thin line on the horizon. And he thought it was land. So he paddled his kayak toward it. But after a while, it disappeared. And Kiviok said, huh, it's disappeared again. It must have been a big wave. And the little bird looked at him again and said, do you know which way to go? And Kibiok said, no, I don't know which way to go because there's nothing but water. And the little bird said, well, follow me. So he started to follow the little bird again. And he paddled his kayak on and on. 
And after a long time, he saw this really thin line on the horizon, like a little piece of thread. And he thought it was land. So he paddled his kayak toward it. And this time, it did not disappear. It got thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And Kibio landed his kayak way over on the other side of the ocean in this strange place. And you know, when I was a little boy and my grandmother told me that story, for the longest time, I didn't know the story had an ending because I always fell asleep. You like that story? Well, you know, that is just the beginning of the story of Kibio. When Kibio ended up on the other side of the ocean, the very first things he came across were giant spiders, and they started to chase him, and he had to run away. And then he found a strange igloo. It had no top, and when he walked up to it and looked inside, there was a giant bumblebee sitting there, and it was cooking some strange stuff in a cooking pot. And Kibio had all these adventures with these strange creatures, and every time he got into trouble, a little bird would come, a little white bird. You know that little bird he had in the back of his coat, the little sowhawk, the little brown one? That was his magic bird. And his magic bird would send him a little white bird, and the little bird would help him. And he had all these adventures, and he got homesick. So he started traveling, trying to find his way home. And while Kibio was trying to find his way home, he traveled through every part of the north. So there are stories about him everywhere. If you go to Siberia, you can hear stories about Kibio. If you go to Alaska, you can hear stories about Kibio. We have Kibio stories all across northern Canada, and there are Kibio stories in Greenland too. And those are the stories that I heard when I was a little boy. Thank you.